死に際の心のありようを想像するのは難しいだがこれだけは断言できる今のままだと大好きな祖父を呪うことになるかもしれんぞ呪術師に悔いのない死などない今一度問う君はなぜ呪術高専に来た Why did you come to Jujutsu Tech? A question that is seeking a direct answer. Or is it a test of resolve? A challenge of ideals or an exploration of morality? Well, it's all of that and more. At first, it might sound like a simple test to see if an individual is capable of going to the school. But it holds much more depth than that. It is a test and also a lesson. That in the very first day you will be put under stress in order to have a direction and an understanding to where you are heading. Jujutsu sorcerers always die with regrets, and death here is not a very pleasant thing, as finding your body in parts is one of the best possible scenarios. Seeing death on a day to day basis of people around you, of your comrades. And even your inevitable death that might come at any moment. All of the negative things around you and the negative current of energy circulating in your body are you really ready for it? Do you have the resolve needed? Why did you come to Jujutsu Tech? Masami Chiyaga, the principal of Tokyo Jujutsu High, is a very clever man. He doesn't like traditions and he knows the little and the big behind the actions of the people above him. And he is a witness of the ones he is in charge of. As a previous teacher and a principal now, he was and still a gate to the Jujutsu world, to the tragedy and insanity it all holds. So it is his responsibility to oversee and guide the newcomers. And it's my personal theory that he started asking this question after the events of the Star Plasma Vessel, where his student Geto, who was convinced of the idea of protecting non sorcerers, was hit so hard by the reality of life and he changed, left the school and became a criminal. If someone as brilliant, smart, and strong as Geto can change from a good person to an evil one, Then, why is the chance of others sticking to flimsy moralities, ideals of self convinced heroism, and thinking of the world very lightly? He lost a student to ideology, and he lost a student to death, lost a student to the harsh reality, and almost lost one to madness. Is it really necessary to welcome these kids in such a harsh world? And just let them be. Jujutsu は常に死と隣り合わせ、自分の死だけでない。不快な仕事だ。ある程度の怒り具合と高いモチベーションは不可欠だ。それを他人に言われたから、笑わせるな。ざけんな。俺は。君は。自分が呪いに殺された時も、そうやって祖父のせいにするのか。Itadori has a lot of similarities and parallels to Geto, but so far his resolve proves stronger. The motivation of him being the only one able to do what he is supposed to transforms responsibility into motivation. And with a strong spirit, he is ready to at least go in a journey of confirming that. And that is the reason behind his acceptance and the smile that Yaga shows after he receives his response. Masamichi's technique makes him able to remotely control cursed corpses, dolls that he creates by imbuing cursed energy in them. At first sight, an average technique that makes him a first grade sorcerer, but it's after the introduction of his best result so far. His masterpiece, as he says, and his son, Panda. And it's after Yaga is sentenced to death from the higher ups because of the danger of the technique, as he can possibly create an army for himself, that the secret of his ability to create dolls 
becomes clear, as he at first refuses to say it, lying about not truly knowing how he did it. Unlike other cursed corpses, Panda's cursed energy belongs to him, not imbued by someone else. He supports himself as an independent life. Yaga is able to do this because he replicates the soul information from the physical information and then inputs it to a cursed corpse's core. A single cursed corpse needs three highly compatible souls and have the souls constantly observe each other. The number three has a myriad of symbolic meanings, from perfection to balance and other representations. The triangle is the geometrical representation of the number three and emphasizes balance. One of the reasons why three is seen as the symbol of perfection is because it represents the sum of unity, one and multiplicity, two. Yaga mentions that the three souls have to be compatible, such as the cores of Panda, him, his unknown sister, and his brother Gorilla. The three of them are very different in their essence, therefore the compatibility between the three souls used is not based on similarity, but rather on difference or multiplicity. Hence the reason why the souls must be able to observe each other, to understand each other, each of them supporting and balancing the others, forming a unity, like Takeru, who was the child of Xakabe's sister. She became so absent and unable to live because of the depression from the loss of someone she loves. Yaga did a favor to Xakabe and made Takeru. Yaga doesn't like to do it, because no matter what, the dead cannot be brought back to life, and this is just a doll, hosting their information. Another theory of mine is that Panda and his three cores are the souls of Masamichi's children. Whether the incident that took their lives will be uncovered, or if it's true in the first place is not certain. Or at least the sister core that is still kept a mystery was his daughter, and the two other souls are ones he found compatible with it and made him capable of making Panda. That is his technique. But why did Yaga not say this in order to save his own life? Why keep it a secret? Well, maybe he is just tired and sick of all of this. Witnessing and guiding people to death while having an ability that basically can keep someone from the people that died. If the higher ups knew this, they would just use him as they wish, and turning the puppet master into a puppet for themselves. An ability that is worth being qualified as a special grade. Yaga is a wall between the new age and tradition. He has his own distinct take, and through observation he is always distancing himself from being stuck in between them, like Gakuganji who is a follower of tradition, even if it neglects common sense and morality. He wasn't against Itadori but also not taking his side. Same thing with Riko. But with his nature as a good person, he accepted Itadori as who he is and directly hinted at saving Riko. He believes that whether someone should live or die is not his judgment to make, especially if the person in question is still innocent. If the potential of harm they have might be dangerous, we can't be certain that they can't avoid it. So at least, they should support them the best they can. まだイタドリが嫌いですか。好き嫌いの問題ではない。呪術規定に基づけばイタドリは存在すら許されん。このために集団の規則を歪めてはならんのだ。何よりイタドリが生きていることでその他大勢が死ぬかもしれん。だが
Unlike Gakuganji, who is adept of tradition, tradition is tradition and doesn't need to look at anything else. It doesn't need to change, indeed it must not change. And that is what Gakuganji is unable to acknowledge. That tradition is merely the cover-up for making possible the execution of every otherwise questionable action. All for the sake of keeping the power in the hands of those who hold it, and so desperately want to cling to it, even if it means the rest of the world falling to shambles. For the system to keep up, tradition is to be followed blindly, never questioned, and for that matter close-minded people like Akuganji are ideal, easily being used as pawns and hence the danger that the core surrounding Gojo represents, much like the souls inside Banda and the other independent cursed corpses. These people look at each other and at the world around them, they observe through their own eyes and reason by themselves, which represents red flags of danger for the system, growing inside the system itself. Contrast to Panda who is very close to humans, but lacks a lot of the emotions that are exclusive to humans. He even sees them as something disgusting and is glad he doesn't have them. He didn't attack Gakuganji. He didn't even get angry at him, because he knows that Gakuganji himself is ironically just being controlled, and that he doesn't hold a grudge against Yaga. They were on good terms and Panda is able to acknowledge that and take a rational decision. As ironic as it is, the human here is more like a puppet himself than the puppet itself. Yaga tells Gakuganji that this is a curse from him, but unlike Itadori's grandfather's curse of protection, or Mai's curse of destruction, this is a curse of awakening. Gakuganji should change after this, to realize that tradition is not the only way, and that following orders isn't a reason to ignore reason. I wouldn't be shocked if Gakuganji in the future protected one of the students with his life, ideally Itadori who he was against for a long time, adding a sense of redemption to his character arc, making him a complete good written character and an ideal antagonist in the story. Instead of sticking to his ideals, this curse should haunt him. Yaga had a proper death, not natural though, he still was a victim of the cursed system he is in, cursed with the burden of a cursed ability and a position, but at least his death has a meaning. Panda will continue his legacy, and his impact is never going to be forgotten, as he monitored and taught the single strongest sorcerer alive, guided people who in turn guided other people, people who became very important and valuable. He also was the person who welcomed the protagonist in his own story, and without it the next challenges would have been different. Many thanks for watching.